This is Twit. Jocelyn, Elizabeth, New Jersey. Hey, Jocelyn, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, Jocelyn, that's okay. I was, of course, either. I know, we keep you on hold for an hour, you wander off. I don't blame you at all. It's fine with me. What can I, what can I do for you? I have a sort of weird question. I am trying to move from where I live now, and the housing stock in Elizabeth is kind of old. Yeah. So there's a lot of plaster and laughs and stuff. Yeah. So is, as I am looking for a new place to live, is there a way for me to figure out how strong the Wi-Fi would be there? Inside the house? Yes. That's an interesting question. That is, it's uh, very important to have yeah, internet. You could do it. Yeah, it is. I mean, believe me, I don't I don't move anywhere. I don't have high speed internet. So the first thing I always do is check the reviews of internet in that neighborhood in that area. And DSL Reports has a great uh, bunch of reviews, dslreports.com. But that doesn't tell you how the the Wi-Fi will work inside. And you're right, sometimes plath and la pla plaster and lath walls. Uh, will lath and plaster will will not transmit very well. They may even have horsehair in them, and the worst thing, of course, is metal. And so, uh, any any construction that has metal in the walls is really going to be death to Wi-Fi. The only yeah. way I can I can I can actually think about I can think you could do this is going over with a realtor and saying I'm going to plug in my Wi-Fi access point now. Now you don't need to have it connected to the internet. Okay, just plug it in. And then you need on your phone, and this doesn't work with iOS. It'll only work with Android or a computer. You could do this. You, if you have a computer with Wi-Fi or a phone, an Android phone with Wi-Fi, there are Wi-Fi analyzer programs. And what you'll do is you will launch that program standing next to your Wi-Fi router. You'll see it. It'll be loud and strong. You're not, you're not on it for the Internet. You're just seeing how strong the signal is. And then you wander around and you see how far down the signal goes. If it gets below, say, well, you know, it's I, I'd actually I'm, let me look up some numbers that you'll you'll want a minimum of. But you'll see as it declines, and if it gets too low or it gets lower than the neighbors, then you're going to have a problem. Then you're going to have a problem, and that's where the mesh Wi-Fi solutions are often the best choice. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Actually, let me tell you one thing that might solve your whole issue is there are mesh Wi-Fi routers. I use one for exactly this situation, and I like it a lot, called Plume, P-L-U-M-E. And the way you, uh, you do this, Jocelyn, is you put a plume in every room, which makes it a little more expensive. They're 49 bucks each. But if you put a plume in every room, then you're going to have good Wi-Fi. It doesn't have to go through the walls particularly. So do they use the um, electrical outlet? As no. They, they, yes, you plug them in an electrical outlet, but they're not using the power line networking. They're just okay. using Wi-Fi. But they have a strong back channel. And the reason, if you put it in every room, that you don't have to worry so much about the walls is they're close enough. They're within 10 feet of each other, right? And so they'll form a network that will, for instance, the you know, let's say your bedroom is next to the bathroom and you've got a plume in each. Your bedroom won't have to go all the way to the Wi-Fi router. It'll go to the bathroom and get its Wi-Fi from there. Okay. So the plume is really good for solving these issues. And you're right. You're, you're now asking about something called power line networking, which can also be used. Uh, although in older homes, that may not be as good a solution. You don't, it can't, here we still have, no, there are homes with knob and tube wiring. Yes, and also because... Really? The outlet. Elizabeth has some knob and tube, so you may... <laughs> that may not be ideal for... No, updated, they, you know... Yeah, they, if you have relatively modern wiring, like in the last 50 years... Uh, p power line networking can also work, and that goes right through walls because it uses your power, you know, your power wiring for networking. But it's not as fast. But those work too. And I've I've used uh, devices from a company called TP Link. You plug the first one in next to your your router, next to your you know modem. It and it hardwires to your modem, and then it plugs into the wall and it goes through the electrical wiring, and then you plug another one in where you want Wi-Fi. And it goes through the wiring to the Wi-Fi, and then it's Wi-Fi in that room. And that might solve as well. 
perfect. Yeah. So, I love but you're, the idea of taking my router. Yeah, bring your router. It doesn't have to be a. It doesn't have to be your router. It can be just some some router that you've got lying around, and it doesn't have to connect to the internet. You're just seeing how the how the radio waves propagate. Yeah, and I'm an Android person, so I Perfect. was checking in the house because, well, in the house, the current apartment, because I'm near a node for our cable open Wi-Fi. Nice. Sitting too far back in the bedroom. Yeah. I'll fall off of my network and go to their network. That drives me crazy. Yeah. I don't want to be on the on the Xfinity Wi-Fi at all. Be on my little secure network and then... I know. So I use an Android an open source uh, program called Wi-Fi Analyzer. It's free. It's from VREM Software. VREM Software Development, and uh, and it's uh, it's open source, which I like. And it gives you a lot of information. You can get a graph, or you can get a signal. I'm not sure what the minimum uh, signal would be. You probably want to be 50, I would say 50 or 60 dB or lower. Because it's going to, if you're, if by the way, the higher the number, the weaker the signal, because it's a negative number. So it's a little, that's a little confusing. Yes. But you yes. want to be, you want to be, I would say 60 dB, minus 60 dB or lower. Uh, but this Wi-Fi analyzer will show you. And the other thing you're looking at is the neighbor's. And you don't ever want to be lower than the neighbor's Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah. That's what you've got there with the with the cable company, right? Because right. yeah, and I don't want to take them off of my system, off to my phone, or my. Because you use it when you move around. I understand. Yeah, I have the same issue. Xfinity Wi-Fi pops up, and I don't want to ever be on it at home, but yeah. I might when I'm traveling around town. So Thank yeah, so yeah. I would say if it's if it's. You know, minus seventy would probably be the, never be never be higher than that. But minus sixty probably is is really where you want to be, or or lower. Minus sixty, fifty, thirty, forty, that like that. Okay, I knew you would know because internet is important to you. <laughs> yeah. I you know I every once in a while I get a call from somebody who says I moved to a house there's no internet. I thought what are you nuts? <laughs> well, you must really like that house because I don't care how nice a house is. If I can't get high speed, 100 megabit or better internet, I'm not moving there. And this is key to the search. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Good for you. I don't blame you. Oh, yeah, because I will die without it. <laughs> Jocelyn, I hope you find a perfect house. Thank you so much. My pleasure, Jocelyn. Take care. Have a great trip. Thank you. So excited. Bye bye.